In 2025, two of the Philippines' most dangerous volcanoes, Tall and Pinatubo, flared to life with seismic spikes, satellite-detected swelling, and surges of toxic gas, igniting the panic fueling. Filipino supervolcanoes awakened simultaneously and shocked scientists. Officials scrambled, emergencies were declared, and experts questioned if this could trigger a disaster beyond living memory. Could the science reveal what's really happening before it's too late? A supervolcano is not just a big volcano, it is a rare geological engine with the power to reshape continents and darken the sky across the globe. Scientists use the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, to measure the true scale of these eruptions. The scale runs from zero for gentle lava flows up to eight, the highest category ever recorded. A VEI-8 event means at least 1,000 cubic kilometers of ash and magma blasted into the atmosphere, enough to bury entire countries beneath meters of fallout. The most famous example is the Toba eruption in Sumatra, about 74,000 years ago. That single event released over 2,800 cubic kilometers of material and left a crater more than 100 kilometers wide, altering the planet's climate for years. By contrast, the Philippines' most explosive eruptions fall well below this threshold. Mount Pinatubo's 1991 eruption, the largest in the country's modern history, reached a VEY of 6. That blast ejected around 10 to 20 cubic kilometers of ash, devastating for Luzon, but only a fraction of a true supervolcano's output. Tall, notorious for its frequent unrest in Caldera Lake, has never approached a VEI-8. Its largest historic eruptions are measured in single digits of cubic kilometers. Yet both volcanoes share features, broad calderas, restless magma chambers, and histories of sudden violence that draw comparisons to supervolcanoes in popular media, especially when both show signs of awakening together. The difference between a large eruption and a super eruption is not simply a matter of headlines. It is a difference of scale, of impact, and of risk. With the VEI as our yardstick, the Philippines' most dangerous volcanoes are formidable. But the leap to global catastrophe requires a magnitude that, so far, remains beyond anything witnessed in living memory. Now, with Tall and Pinatubo both restless, scientists and the public are watching every signal, wondering if the numbers might finally climb higher. Seismic sensors at Teol registered a sharp spike in volcanic tremor at 5.25 a.m. on August 10, 2025. PH5 OLCS recorded 19 volcanic earthquakes in a single 24-hour window, a level of activity that stands out against the usual background rumble. Just days later, satellite-based INSAR imagery, referenced at 642 in Sentinel-1 data, revealed a subtle but measurable uplift on Volcano Island, ending months of gradual subsidence. The ground had risen by several centimeters in less than a week, a clear signal that magma was shifting beneath the surface. Gas emissions told a similar story. On August 8, 2025, sulfur dioxide output spiked to 374 tons per day, with levels staying elevated into September. By the time the SO2 graph at 557 was released, it was clear that degassing was not a short-lived event. Instead, Persistent four-digit SO2 values painted a picture of sustained unrest, with the volcano releasing more gas than at any point since its last major eruption. Each of these signals, seismic swarms, ground inflation, and surging gas emissions, was timestamped and published in agency bulletins, then amplified across social media and YouTube. The numbers, usually tucked away in technical reports, became viral proof for those convinced that Teol and other Philippine calderas were waking up together. For the first time, raw monitoring data, charts, graphs, and satellite frames circulated as evidence of a synchronized threat, fueling speculation and pushing the narrative of simultaneous awakening into the mainstream conversation. Renato U. Solidum Jr. stands at the front of the press room, his words measured but unmistakably serious. As director of FIVL CS, his briefings have become the central reference point for both local officials and anxious families watching the news. At 8.33, Solidum confirms what the data have suggested for days. The alert level for Teol is officially raised. This escalation is not decided lightly. FIVL CS follows a strict protocol. 
Each increase in alert level is based on a combination of seismic swarms, ground deformation, persistent gas emissions, and direct field observations. In this case, the jump from alert level 1 to 2 means the agency has determined that unrest is above normal and that magma may be moving closer to the surface. Solidum's statement is clear. The public is advised to avoid the permanent danger zone on Volcano Island, and local governments are instructed to review evacuation plans and emergency supplies. He emphasizes that the alert level system is designed to provide timely, actionable warnings, not to cause panic, but to enable communities to prepare. 5 all CS maintains a 24-hour watch, ready to escalate further if signals intensify. Solidum reminds everyone that while increased activity does not guarantee an eruption, the risk of hazardous events, such as sudden steam-driven explosions or ashfall, has grown. The agency's decision carries institutional weight, shifting the situation from isolated data points to coordinated policy action. For the thousands living around Tall Lake and for disaster response teams across Batangas, the briefing is the signal to stay alert and ready for rapid changes. The science, now translated into official warning, sets the stage for the human response that will follow. On the southern shore of Tal Lake, a family gathers what they can fit into plastic bags and sacks. Their home sits just outside the permanent danger zone, but every time the alert level rises, the routine returns. Unplug appliances, lock the doors, and wait for the barangay captain signal. The children know what to pack. School uniforms, notebooks, a battered radio, their father checks the sky for ash, eyes darting to the volcano's silhouette. Since 2020, no one has lived on Volcano Island itself, but the threat still shapes life for thousands along the lakeshore. Business at the fish pens has never fully recovered. In 2020, the sudden fish kills and mass evacuations cost the community billions of pesos. Now, even a rumor of unrest drives prices down and keeps tourists away. Some families have moved inland, but most return, hoping for another stretch of calm. The local school, shuttered for months after the last eruption, reopens with fewer students each time. Even without new evacuations in 2025, the memory of exile lingers, families ready to leave at a moment's notice, livelihoods one alert away from vanishing again. Claims of secret government projects and cosmic alignments have swept across social media every time Philippine volcanoes stir. At 10.12 in one viral video, HAARP is blamed for triggering unrest beneath Tail and Pinatubo, while Twitter threads point to planetary alignments as the hidden cause behind the spike in seismic activity. These stories travel fast, but the data tells a different story. GPS deformation maps from 750 show ground movement tightly confined to Taysal's caldera. No matching signals appear at Pinatubo, nor anywhere else in Luzon. Localized uplift and tremor patterns are consistent with magma movement just beneath the volcano, not with any global or electromagnetic influence. Chris Newhall, who helped lead the Pinatubo eruption response, puts it plainly, the Pinatubo eruption was the largest in a century, but to reach supervolcano levels requires a much bigger eruptive event. No credible monitoring agency has found evidence that HAARP or planetary alignments can trigger volcanic unrest. Instead, every spike in activity so far has a clear local explanation, tectonic shifts, magmatic pulses, or hydrothermal changes, backed by years of direct observation. The numbers and maps are public, and the science remains grounded in what can be measured, not in what trends online. At 11.45 a.m., the latest modeled ashfall map is released, showing a dense, color-coded ring encircling Teixal's caldera. The hazard zones stretch outward in bands, deep red for the permanent danger zone, orange for adjacent lakeshore towns, yellow for areas where fine ash could settle with the wind. These overlays are not guesswork. They're built from decades of eruption records and real-time atmospheric data. In the worst-case scenario, a large magnitude eruption like Pinatubo's in 1991 would send ash plumes thousands of meters above Luzon, drifting far beyond Batangas. Ashfall thick enough to collapse roofs could reach dozens of kilometers from the crater, while fine particles might settle as far as Metro Manila and beyond. PHI VOL CS bulletins linked directly in every agency advisory spell out the steps. 
Keep indoors during ash fall, seal windows, use N95 masks or cloth to cover your nose and mouth, and prepare emergency kits with water, food, and radios. The alert level system, color-coded from blue to red, guides local governments on when to evacuate, when to shelter, and when to stand down. These protocols are not about panic, but about readiness. The science behind each alert, each shaded map, is designed to give every community a fighting chance if the worst ever comes. In January 2025, PHYY VA OLCS recorded a spike in sulfur dioxide emissions at Tayol Volcano, reaching over 15,000 tons per day, and raised alert levels as ground deformation and seismic swarms intensified. Official monitoring data, shown at 642 and 415 in this documentary, confirmed these signs of unrest. While viral claims suggested simultaneous awakening at Tall and Pinatubo, PHYVOL CS bulletins and satellite records show only Tayal exhibited significant activity during this period. Economic losses in Batangas, including major fishery disruptions and school closures, underscore the real local impact. However, no evidence supports the theory that external technologies or planetary alignments cause these events. As volcanologist Chris Newhall notes, true super eruptions remain exceedingly rare. Key questions remain, what exact processes triggered TEL's 2025 episode and how might future hazards unfold? Today, PHIVOLCS continues to update public bulletins and hazard maps, emphasizing readiness over speculation. The facts are clear. Vigilance and preparedness, rooted in scientific evidence, remain the Philippines' best tools for facing volcanic threats.